in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up sing that in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up oh you lift me up you are my strength Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches. I want you to point at your chest right there. You are my, my strength. Yes, you are. Strength. I want you to take a couple of minutes right now, lift your hands to the Lord and thank him for being your strength. Father, you know what we've been through this week. God, you know how difficult it is to be in the world. But Father, when you said that when we are weak, you are strong. So Father, thank you, God, for being our strength. When we don't feel worthy, when we feel inadequate, God, it's by your power and your Holy Spirit you strengthen us. Father, when we wanted to give up, say it, enough is enough. God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have given us strength. God, thank you for restoring relationships, God. Father, it's tough. Marriages, friendships. But God, it's only by your strength, God, that you're enabling us to see it for. So, Father, this, at this moment, we praise you. God, we thank you for being a God who lives, who listens to us, who inclines your ear towards us. And, Father, we praise you for being a God who is our strength. Lift me up. Come on, keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. It reaches to me. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, y'all, to give the Lord. Come on. The Lord who is your strength. Give him a hand clap of praise for him being God. At this moment, we're going to dismiss, dismiss our teens. See Josh there, right there. He's about 7'2", so y'all can't miss him, amen. Teens, y'all follow him out, please, to your teen service. And we're going to continue in our series called The Thrill of Hope. Amen. Uh, please turn me your Bibles to Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Third book in the New Testament. And we're going to be in chapter 1, start at verse 26 and go all the way through verse 38. When you get there, please say amen. Please stand for the reading of the word if you can. All right. And it reads, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. 
But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. Do y'all see that word favor with God? Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. I love Mary. It shows her humanity in verse 34. Mary asked the angel, how can this be since I have not had sexual relations with the man? A modern day translation, are you crazy? Verse 35, the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be, bo- the, uh, to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of her who, called, who were called childless. For nothing is impossible with God. Look at verse 38. See, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. Title of this sermon is called Favored by God. Favored by God. Let's all bow for what a prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Father, it is your word that speaks and transforms people's lives. So at this moment, reduce me. God, you increase. May your Holy Spirit convict, give revelation to your people. God, we need you today. It is in your precious Son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Church, how many of you all are frequent flyers, like you get United Club, look at you raised that, United Club, amen, all right. We're my Southwest folk, any Southwest folk, Lord, okay, amen, don't represent, all right, and uh, United for, oh, y'all Southwest, oh, notice they sat on this side, amen. But you know, it, it's, there comes a lot of um, privileges that come with those clubs. They market and they know that People like to be preferred. Uh, they like to give specific access. Uh, remember when we went to Disney World, uh, we got the Fast Pass, right? And the Fast Pass gives you the ability to skip line, uh, to, get, to get ahead to the front, amen? Uh, but they know and they market this because they know that we as people like to be preferred. And as if you are a United member, you get, probably get to go to the lounge, amen? You get to go to the lounge. You, uh, you put your pinky up when you go to the lounge. Like, I'm special, amen? Uh, or sometimes you get preferred seating. Uh, I know nothing about this. Normally, I'm in group four, amen? I'm the last group. That's, that's how I roll. But if you're a preferred member, you, you are, are, are probably in the first, first group or get priority seating. But there are a lot of benefits that you get by being a preferred member. Uh, we would call this, you would be favored. You would be preferred. And uh, what I want to talk to you about today is the favor of God. That That is very similar to how God's favor works. That God, through his divine grace and mercy, prefers, doesn't mean he loves people more than others. Don't take that. Doesn't mean you're greater than others, but God will prefer you in a certain manner to bring forth his will for his people, right? Uh, Or uh, all of you who are saved, right? Uh, You were picked out of many. You were called into God's marvelous light. Yes, God loves everyone, but God called you. He preferred you. He favored you. That means he didn't love other people, but he preferred you. He favored you. And we're going to talk about God's uh, favor today because I believe that God still favors his people. 
uh, it's not by accident that you are in the job in the certain position. It's not by accident that you're God's child and they see something's different about you. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what to call it. You know what it is. But your, your boss, maybe he, he likes you in a certain He doesn't even believe in God. But it's found a liking towards you. Or you have found yourself in a scenario where uh, it was not going to happen. Maybe it was a medical doctor, a medical treatment. And all of a sudden, you got bumped to the front of the line. Uh, we call this God's favor. And us as believers, I want to level set this because a lot of incorrect teaching has come through the church and favor has been manipulated in the church. Let me just start out by saying that, right? Favor does not mean God is taking you to more material possessions. That, that you can come to God and you can do all this stuff and praise him more and all of a sudden, Next thing you know, you got favor, and favor means you got new shoes and new clothes. Uh, that is not what favor is. Favor uh, is, is, is so, when you understand favor, it does not push you to a level of pride. It pushes you to a level of humility. When you understand biblical favor. Because God chose you. Come on now. When you understand that God chose you when you didn't need to be chosen. See, you've worked towards your preferred points, and you think you deserve preferential seat, amen. But in the kingdom, you don't deserve anything. But God still in his love puts you in specific places for it to be used by him. We call this the, the favor of God. So grace, we know, is God's unmerited favor. But favor is God's demonstrated delight. It is, it is a tangible evidence that God's hand is on your life. It's tangible evidence that God's hand is on your life. But did you know that you can seek God's favor? Uh, we have to uh, strengthen that. You can pray and ask God, God, I am seeking your favor in a certain manner. Amen. Uh, Psalms 119 uh, uh, and 50, uh, verse 58 says, I have sought your favor with all my heart, by gracious, be gracious to me according to your promise. Isn't that amazing? That's my prayer today. I, I, I pray that for God's favor uh, to be in my life um, and, uh, and, and to be in my life. So um, here we see May, uh, Mary being called by the angel, okay, who are created beings, he heavenly beings. Uh, the angel is calling Mary favor. That's big time. The angel, we, sometimes we elevate angels, but the angel comes to Mary and says, greetings, favorite woman. What I love about this is um, God favors unlikely people to accomplish his will. Some of us walked in here today, and we don't feel like God would favor us. We don't feel like God were deserving of being favored. But when you look at Mary, God favors unlikely people. Uh, Brother John did a great job talking about John the Baptist uh, who ate locusts and honey. And, and I know a lot of you went home and were thankful for your chicken fried steak. Amen. Um, but uh, God favors unlikely people. Let me t sh show you how I can prove this through the text. Number one, God's favor is not equal to material possessions. How do I know this, Pastor? Mary was poor. Mary and Joseph were, were poor. Some of you may be looking at your economic status and be like, God is not for me. You need to stop buying into the American way of life. That because we have more things means that God is more for us. It doesn't matter how much money you got in your bank account, God can still be favorable for you. Amen? Amen. Uh, God is not limited to age. Amen. Why do I know this, Pastor? Mary was young. Uh, she was in her teenage years when she was called favorite one. Uh, so age is not a limitation. And Paul told Timothy, don't allow anyone to look down on you because of your youth. God can work through your teens. Parent, this is why it's so important to bring your kids to worship. God can work through teenagers, right? Amen. I found my wife when I was a teenager. Amen. I think I did pretty good, amen? 
Amen. God, <laughs> God's favorite is not limited to location. Uh, here in the text, they, the, the reading commentary just said that the writer highlighted Nazareth because Nazareth was off, was off the map. It was not a, a big, to well-to-do city. So Mary was from a small town of Nazareth. God can favor you from where you're from. How many city folk we got in the room? Amen. Some of them are city folk. Amen. I work with my country folk. All right. We got my country folk. Amen. God can use you too. Amen. <laughs> God can use country folk. Amen. God can use you wherever you are. He's not limited. That's what we call God omnipresent. Uh, he can show up anywhere. He can show up in Houston, Cyprus, Tomball, Katy. God is not limited to location. Uh, but last but not least, God is not limited to your physical limitations. Mary was a virgin. And this is where we look at Mary where she didn't even have sex with anyone. But God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was able to impregnate her. What does this mean? God is sovereign. God can do anything he wants to do. Therefore, don't ever walk into a situation looking at your physical limitations and think God can't do nothing. God doesn't need your physical ability to perform what he needs to do. He uses it, but he don't need it. Here, Mary was a virgin, and God still was able to bring forth his child. Favor is all over the Bible. Uh, Joseph, one of my favorite characters, who my mother named me after. Uh, Joseph, wherever he went, he was favored. His brothers sold him into slavery, right? He ends up being in Potiphar's house, favored. Potiphar's wife lied on him. He gets thrown into jail. The Bible says that the prison guards found favor on him, and Joseph got a leadership position in prison, favored. He then gets out of prison and then interprets Pharaoh's dreams. All of a sudden, he gets promoted to the highest in the land, favored. Joseph was favored. But also Jesus, even Jesus, uh, Luke 2, and uh, 51 through 52 says, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with people. Isn't that amazing? God, God grew him in favor with people. But how do we gain this favor? How do we gain this favor? Um, Isaiah 66, 2-3 says, uh, I will look favorably, uh, favorably on this kind of person, one who is humble, submissive in spirit, and trembles in my word. This is why we have to understand how can we position ourselves for favor. Because we can achieve material success, and God ain't in that. This is why it's tough, and it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because we think we can equate a bag to blessings. Come on now. And... What God is saying here through showing us through Mary and through Joseph and through all these things is, I favor people who favor me. I favor people who have the right heart posture. I favor people who live with integrity. I favor people who do the right thing. Hence why it is mentioned twice that Mary was a virgin. Why did the writer mention it twice? Luke, Uncle Luke, the doctor. Why did he mention that she was a virgin twice? He wanted to highlight that she was a woman of integrity. I'm not saying if you have, doesn't mean see you're not. Amen. You know what I mean, church. But he highlights that to show that she had was set apart, that she had waited for the right thing. And because she was the perfect person, God decided to use her. But look at this, church. Look at also we see in Scripture. This is my second point. God favors us for his purpose and his glory. 
This is this will trip me out reading this. Here, the angel comes and says, "Greetings, O favored one." Okay. And then his way of saying that she's favored, he says, "Mary, you're pregnant." Ladies. <laughs> Now listen here, the Lord can bless in a lot of ways, but you don't want that blessing, amen? That's, that, okay, but greetings, right? You're pregnant. You've got to carry a baby nine months. You've got to go through feet swelling. Threatens of premature labor. All of the cravings and all of the emotions that come with pregnancy. Mary, you got to go through that. When I was reading this, it didn't seem like Mary was favored. It didn't seem like favored. But the more I started to think about the way God uses people, is God inconveniences people to convenience others. Let me help you. Jesus was in heaven with God. He didn't have a care in the world, living the blessed life. But he saw the state of humanity. And he decided to leave his position. Come on now. And come to earth with all the stuff we got to deal with as humans. And live on this earth. Be denied. Be dejected. Be betrayed. And then finally be crucified. To give his life. But he came so that you may have life. He inconvenienced himself for your benefit. He took the pain, the ridicule. For your benefit. Parents, let me help you out. Parenting is an inconvenience. Come on. Come on parents, can I, can I get an get amen? Financially, Lord, you go to a restaurant, you owe $150 for them little boogers. Lord, your time, calling the school, showing up, Lord, it's an inconvenience. But a leader and a servant inconveniences themselves, come on, for the benefit of others. Jesus said, listen here, if you want to follow me, deny self. Come on now. There's a lot of things I want to do. There's a lot of ways I want to live. But I deny myself. Deny my emotions, deny my feelings, deny my passions. Secondly, pick up my cross. A cross is heavy. A cross is ugly. A cross is beautiful. Uh, it's, it's not beautiful. But pick it up and then you follow me. Why? Because a leader inconvenienced himself for the benefit of his family. Ladies, if you got a good man, you understand. A man will suck it up. Come on now. Go to work. Provide for his family. Put food on the table. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. I just want to watch the game, baby. That's all. That's it. Just let me watch football. Don't complain, but wake up the next morning to serve his family, to inconvenience, to work hard so that these boogers can eat. Come on now. It's not about me. And as we see other faiths elevate Mary. Now, Mary deserves her cred because she is the mother of Jesus. And you don't talk about nobody mama, amen? <laughs> Especially Jesus' mama. But uh, you go, oh, that, that's a mama joke you don't want to mess with. <laughs> Woo! Right? But some faiths have elevated Mary even to the fact where they pray to her.
But don't get it twisted. This is all about Jesus. Come on. It's all about the King of Kings. It's all about the Lord of Lords. It's all about what God was going to do through her. It's not about how she felt at the moment. It's all about the bigger picture of what Jesus was going to do for the world. And we can miss this, favored people, by denying pain, denying position, because God wants to do something through us, something that is bigger than us. And this is what Jesus is. It's all about God's glory. It's all about him. But look at this church. I love this. Because this should be our response today. Mary is amazing. After, okay, here's the thing. Mary's 14 years old. She's going about her way. An angel comes down. She's about to head to Costco to get some groceries. Regular routine. And an angel comes down. Okay? We know she was spooked, right? Because it said she was afraid. The angel had to calm her. Right? Don't be afraid. Okay? Then Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. She had waited all this time, and she was doing the right thing. She was planning her wedding. Oh, Lord, I'm ready to get married. Planning her future, right? And all of a sudden, the angel comes down and says, I'm going to ruin all of that. Okay? You're going to have a baby, right? Can you just imagine the discussion that they had to have in their home, right? We don't read into that. We know Joseph, the angel had to visit Joseph, so Joseph didn't freak out. Because, man, do you know how it would come if your wife came home and said she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I'm going to have to do some fasting and prayer. By the what? I'm going to have to wait nine months to see what he looked like. <laughs> I want to see what he looked like first. Lord. But after all of that, after being in that position, Mary says something that you should say to God. I am the Lord's servant. The fear, the unknown, the shame, the ridicule. After all of that, Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Some of you need to say that in your own life. God, whatever you want me to do, I'm your servant. God, if you want me to serve in your church, I'm your servant. In the community, I am your servant. On the job, I am your servant. In the home, I am your servant. That should be our response to God today, to say yes and amen. Jesus was Jesus' attitude. Jesus says, I came to serve, not to be served. That should be our posture in life, It's just to serve the Lord. Martin Luther King said this, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Everybody can serve. God can use anyone, but you have to be willing to be served, be uh, uh, worshipped by God or to be used by God. I like what else he says. He says, uh, and some versions say, um, if you look at the, the last verse, Mary says, may it be according to what you have said, some according to your word. And it just shows how Mary trusted in the word of God. And that if we are going to walk in favor, we have to trust and follow the word of God. Mary said, whatever you said, I'm going to do that. And, and that should be our posture in our lives. God, whatever you have said in your word, God, I'm going to do it. Whatever you've told me to do, God, I, I'm, I'm going to do it because God is faithful to his word. Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from 
the mouth of God. I love this picture here. I'll let you show this picture. It shows a, a great example of how we need to stay connected to God and to understand God's favor in the in a connection in a connection of it. Psalms 1 explains this picture here. It says, How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction. Remember, God favors those who favor him. Look at this. And he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted by flowing streams that bears fruit in its season, and its leaves don't wither, whatever he does prospers. The difference between the tree by the water and the tree that's far away from the water is it's close to the source. The reason why the tree by the water is growing and it's thriving, it's yielding fruit, it's looking different, it's looking better, it's looking favored. The reason why the tree by the water is better is because it's connected to the source. It's closer to the source. That is the word for the day for favor. That if you want to be favored by God and used by God, you've got to stay close and connected to the source. Mary, because her character was right, because she was a follower of the Lord, God was able to use her to bring forth Jesus Christ. I love this, this favor because when you understand your position in Christ, you pray differently. You, you, you have a different perspective on things. And church, you know our story. Our story is all one of God's, God's favor. You know, we were of many churches selected to have this property. There were other churches. It doesn't mean that there are bad churches. God favored us in that matter. We're grateful for that. We had another instance that I want to share with you that I'm so proud of. I shared with the, with the Dream Team is when we were doing our expansion project, we filed for a permit. And uh, we went through the permitting process, and Harris County came back and said, Okay, for your portable buildings, which are uh, impermissible, right, meaning water can flow underneath, right, uh, we want you to add detention. We said, what? For these, two, just those two buildings, water can flow, detention? Didn't make sense. And the detention that they drafted up was going to cost the church $120,000. Lord, you can say something right there, okay? I almost said something. I maybe did say something, amen. Lord, holy words, holy words. Yeah, holy words, only, only holy. But we were freaking out. Why? Why? Now, when we start building, when we do our expansion on this, yeah, yeah we're going to have to add attention because we're going to build brick and mortar, all that stuff, but not for this. So we prayed. We asked the Lord for his what? For his favor. I was on a couch chilling Thursday or Friday of last week. I can't remember. And I got a call from my contractor. And he says that Harris County decided you all don't have to add detention. <laughs> favor. Favor. That's God. It ain't me. It ain't our building. It is God who worked on the hearts of men on behalf of his saints. That's preferential treatment. And church, I don't believe that God is limited just to doing things in image church's life. I believe that God in your life, in your marriage, come on, what does the word say? That he who finds a wife finds a what? And obtains what? Favor, that God can favor you in your life, favor you in your marriage, favor you in your finances, favor you wherever you go. God can give you a treatment. Come on. How many of you have been on the job, but you know 
It wasn't your resume that moved you on that track. You got promoted to some stuff where you didn't deserve. Or how many of you have, have known with your children that God is, is working on their hearts and lives? Your parenting ain't that good. You ain't that good. Quit, quit, quit trying to pat you You ain't that good. It's God who favors. So if you train up a child in the way that they should go, when they grow old, they won't depart from it. That's favor. Come on now. We've got to understand that it is God working in our lives. And it is okay to pray for favor. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise.